Hello, today we'll be talking about the drug Vaptans and the management of hyponatremia and heart failure. So the drug class of the Vaptans are essentially vasopressin receptor antagonists and they block the action of vasopressin or ADH on B1A, B1B, and V2 receptors. Um, these receptors are located in different places in the body. For today's discussion, we'll focus primarily on the V2 receptor and the primary drug that blocks that is Tolvaptan, or it's one of them that is seen most commonly in the uh, clinical setting. So let's look here. And this is the mechanism of how the Tolvaptan works. So essentially, all we need to know is that it allows for selective water diuresis. So imagine a patient who has a serum sodium of 124 millilitre equivalents per liter, and if we want this to increase, how do we do that? Well, basically, the best way to do it is to allow for an increased amount of water diuresis while preserving the ions involved, right? So that's exactly what happens here. Let's look what happens physiologically when vasopressin isn't blocked. Vasopressin binds to the V2 receptor, activates a secondary messenger pathway, right? And these storage vesicles, which contain these water, porn, water aquaporin pores, um, get exocytosed, and these aquaporins go on the apical membrane of the collecting duct lumen. Next, water is basically reabsorbed in this manner. So if we were to block this pathway at the first step right here to prevent the binding of vasopressin, then all of this will not only not happen, it will go the other way. This will allow for the selective diuresis of water, and this is the manner in which the hyponatremia will be fixed. So this drug, uh, the Vaptans, are used primarily in patients with euvolemic and hypervolemic hyponatremia um, with serum sodium of less than 125. Uh, a patient with a serum sodium of around 125, maybe a little bit higher, it can also be used on, um, but those guys, it should be more symptomatic um, hyponatremia that that we think of using the Vaptans because they really are a very costly drug. In, in addition, we may use this drug when fluid restriction measures fail. Um, it's important to know that this drug is contraindicated in patients with underlying liver disease or severe kidney disease. So based on the Tempo trial, we saw that patients who had underlying liver disease and used the Vaptans had their AST and ALST levels increased by almost two to three fold, um, creating almost like a drug-induced hepatitis. So you do wanna avoid this drug in patients with underlying liver disease. In addition, Vaptans are also used in patients with um, PKD and polycystic kidney disease and also nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, but for the purposes of this lecture, just remember that it's also used um, for euvolemic and hyper hypervolemic hyponatremia treatment. So in terms of the literature on the benefit of this drug, we see that um, on average patients would be expected to have an increase in 5.5 to 7 in their serum sodium if they were to have an initial serum sodium of about 125. And this is based on two major studies, the Everest outcome trial and also the SALT-1 and SALT-2 trials, and of 330 and 138. So even though this was a significant clinical improvement, we do not see any improvement in the long-term outcome, and this does not affect the mortality rate in patients with um, hyponatremia who have heart failure. So finally, we arrive at this, this topic, cost-effectiveness. Um, as I mentioned before, this drug is very costly. It costs almost $300 per tablet in some places. Um, so this is a very, you know, it's a very expensive drug to use. Very few cost-effectiveness studies have been done in this drug, surprisingly, and um, probably because there was one done and, and, and in, a, in a group of patients with polycystic kidney disease, and it was noted that um, this drug was extremely not cost-effective. Um, so, you know, this is just something to keep in mind in terms of choosing which patients should receive this drug. However, cost-effectiveness alone should not be used as the sole determinant of which patient receives um, a certain drug, but currently, under the healthcare arena, um, you know, under all of the current budget constraints, it is good to keep in mind, especially when the cost of a drug is so um, high, and also we see that it does not improve um, uh, mortality in the long term.